Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. We've had our first taste of heat. Temperatures on Friday the 17th of June reached 32.7 Celsius at Santon Downham in Suffolk. Temperatures then dropped through the weekend, but they are now beginning to rise once again. So what about the next two weeks? Well, I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 21st, the longest day of the year, the summer solstice. To begin with, it's mainly dry. There is a little bit of showery rain in the northern half of the UK, but it's not amounting to a great deal. In the short term, not much changes. Dry for much of the UK, but then through Thursday, Friday in particular, low pressure starts to return. The chance of showers or longer spells of rain increases, and with an Atlantic flow pushing in, temperatures will be dropping, but I'll come back to that in a moment. That continues through the rest of the weekend, possibly some heavy rain around in places, at least according to this computer model run. Into the early part of next week, the rather changeable theme continues, although just a hint at the end that high pressure from the Azores may be starting to influence things a little bit more, at least in the southern half of the UK. I think it's just worth quickly taking a look at the air mass profile, which accompanies that GFS run, starting again on Tuesday the 21st, yellows and oranges, so it's warm air aloft. That remains the case in the short term, but then through Friday and the weekend, the greens return, low pressure becomes dominant, it's cooler, at least at 1500 metres above our heads. What that means in terms of the temperatures down at the ground level, 15 GMT, Wednesday the 22nd, 24s over much of England there, a little bit cooler as you head northwards into Scotland. It's also worth just taking a quick look across continental Europe, it's very warm or hot in France. Although Spain isn't as hot as it has been for much of the early part of the summer. Going forwards to Thursday the 23rd, 28 Celsius in southern England, with the GFS's tendency to undershoot a little, 29 or even 30 wouldn't be entirely out of the question, so very warm or even hot. Uh, northeastern parts of Britain there warm as well, and even Northern Scotland, 23 Celsius, very pleasant. But things change through the weekend. Saturday the 25th, maximums now down to 18s or 19s, generally even there in southern Britain. Also, there will be some rather cool nights, so pleasant for sleeping. Temperatures down into single figures on Monday morning, uh, quite widely even in the south. And in the afternoon, 18s, 19s, 20s in southern and central counties, 12s, 13s further north. If anything, actually a little bit below the seasonal average by then. The MoGreps Ensemble plot illustrates the trends quite well through the coming week. Temperatures rising through the first few days and then clearly dipping away. And there's quite good agreement between the runs. There is something of a spread there, but in general terms, they are suggesting a relatively high degree of confidence even later on in the week. It's also, there's also likely to be some rain around, or at least that's what's been suggested by Mogreps from, from around the 23rd or 24th, a number of spikes start to show up. One or two very big ones there around the 25th or 26th, maybe some downpours if according to one or two of the runs of the ensemble. It's difficult to say what the amounts would be like though because there's, there's quite a range there but the general signal is for there to be an increasing chance of rain later on. Similar story in Glasgow, dry until about the 24th and then a number of spikes appear. Although they, they actually are not as big as the ones on the London plot so maybe at least initially the chance of rain there or significant amounts of rain a little bit lower, but then later on some bigger spikes also start to show up there. The rainfall forecasts from the deterministic models, so ECM and GFS, days 0 to 5 here, 
it's quite a messy picture. There isn't really a consistent signal, perhaps the greatest totals in Scotland. But GFS on the right is showing the chance of higher totals there in parts of central Britain as well. That's not supported by ECM. Just really, really highlights the uncertainty about rainfall distribution through the first five days as that more unsettled pattern begins to develop. But the 0 to 10 day charts give a clearer indication. Wettest in the north and particularly the northwest. Western Scotland there probably seeing the highest rainfall totals, although according to ECM, parts of Western Wales could also be very wet indeed. The key takeaway there is that the chance of rain is pretty high through the days 5 to 10 part of the forecast period. The totals in the south though still open to debate. There may not be that much rain around in parts of southern Britain, so definitely something to keep an eye on. So do the deterministic models agree with each other at the end of the first week about that rather changeable or unsettled pattern? Here's for GFS, Tuesday the 28th. Low pressure, really dominating things across the UK. Perhaps a little bit drier there in the southeast at times. The Canadian model, a similar story, perhaps just slightly further northwest for low pressure area, but picking into the details there, which really doesn't add much value, I think, when looking this far ahead. The uh, German Icon model, this suggests that the Azores high pressure could be having more of a role to play across the southern part of Britain, but generally a mixed picture. Going Looking at the uh, ECM, the same story, possibly a chance of some very wet conditions there with this area of low pressure coming into play. Finally, the UK Met Office Global, also an unsettled scenario. Showers or maybe longer spells of rain there moving across much of the country. Good agreement then for a changeable pattern at the end of the first week. Variances between them in terms of how much rain there is likely to be, but definitely a chance of showers in all parts of the UK and the possibility of more prolonged spells of wet weather too. So that takes us to the end of the first week. What about week two? The trends and probabilities as we move through days 7 to 14. I'll start with the uh, GEFS plot for London. Air mass temperatures across the top. The thick purple line is the ensemble mean, the thick black line, the 30-year norm. And they are very close to each other throughout the second week. But one or two of the runs are doing different things. These are very, very warm or even possibly hot. And there are some cooler ones in the mix too. I think probably close to average is a reasonable summation of what that is showing with a low chance of it turning significantly warmer. Rainfall across the bottom, spikes continue to appear. An ongoing risk therefore, but it doesn't look particularly wet, although it certainly wouldn't be staying dry throughout if this was correct. Going up to the northwest to see what's happening there, so Glasgow this week, similar story across the top, the air mass profile, one or two runs bringing in much warmer um, air. I think the signal for it to reach the northwest is weaker than it, it was on the uh, chart for London. Also, there are more rain spikes through week two, and some are very big. In fact, I would say this is showing quite a wet picture for the northwest of the UK. Two metre temperatures through the second week. The data table here is for London. The light oranges and darker oranges are dominant throughout, but the, the, the darker oranges tend to increase and some reds and a little bit of pink show up as well later on. A slight warming trend there. It's not very strong, but I think it does show up. So perhaps temperatures close to the average, maybe a little bit below on one or two days early on, then more likely to be above that 
towards the end of the week. It's a similar story in Glasgow, albeit at a lower level. Yellows and light oranges, and then towards the end, some of the darker oranges start to arrive. Just a very weak trend there towards higher temperatures later, but very close to the average really would sum that one up, maybe a little bit below, especially early on. The data table showing surface level pressure for York. The greens really indicating low pressure, 996 to 1,010 millibars. The yellows, 1,011 to 1,025, covering quite a big range. But again, the signal is for low pr lower pressure to be in the ascendancy through the first few days, but perhaps later on, pressure begins to rise. One or two runs showing 1,026 to 1,040 millibars by the end of week two. So all in all, quite mixed would really sum, sum that up, but that uh, trend towards perhaps more settled conditions at the very end. The mean surface level pressure chart from the GEFS for Friday the 1st of July has the Azores high pressure quite a long way to the southwest, I suppose more or less where it should be. Low pressure to the northwest, a changeable pattern across the UK, driest in the south, wettest in the north. And the European ECM, quite similar at the same time, maybe the Azores high starting to nudge in a little bit more, but all in all quite mixed at this point at 10 days ahead. It's really in days 10 to 14 where there is something of a signal for higher pressure to be returning. So to summarise, week one, it's a fine and warm or even very warm start in much of the UK. It then turns more unsettled and cooler with all regions seeing showers or longer spells of rain. There is uncertainty though about the amount, so keep up to date with the short range forecasts. Week two, a changeable start with showers or longer spells of rain but there is a sign of it turning drier later on as pressure begins to build. Temperatures fluctuate around the average, perhaps a little bit on the cool side early on, and then becoming warmer towards the end. And there are a few signs from the computer models of it turning very warm, but at the moment the chance of that is quite low, perhaps around 20% in southern Britain. So, there we have it. It's a mixed outlook, a fine start, then an increasing chance in all regions of showers or longer spells of rain, temperatures dipping down to a seasonal average, perhaps a little bit below it, before recovering, maybe towards the end of week two. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.